Nebhepeta Menchu Hotep II was a pharaoh of the 11th dynasty who reigned for 51 years. Around his 39th year on the throne he reunited Egypt thus ending the first intermediary period. Consequently, he is considered the first pharaoh of the Middle Kingdom family. Menchu Hotep II was the son of Intif III and Intif III's wife Iah, who may also have been his sister. This lineage is demonstrated by the Stella of Henanu, an official who served under Intif II, Intif III and his son, which the Stella identifies as Horus S. Ankh, Ibti III Way, Manchu Hotep II's first Horus name. As for IAH, she bore the title of MWT and SWT, King's Mother. The parentage of Menchu Hotep II is also indirectly confirmed by a relief at Chateau Rigel. Menchu Hotep II had many wives who were buried with him in or close to his mortuary temple. Tem, who might have been Menchu Hotep II's chief wife, as she bore the titles of HMT and SWT, King's Wife, HMT and SWT, MRYT, F, King's Wife, His Beloved, and W. WRTHTSNBWI, Great One of the Hetus Scepter of the Two Lords. She gave Menchu Hotep II two children, one of which was certainly Menchu Hotep III, since Tem was also called MWT and SWT, King's Mother, and MWT and SWTBITJ, Dual King's Mother. Apparently she died after her husband and was buried by her son in Menchu Hotep Temple. Her tomb was discovered in 1859 by Lord Duffering and fully excavated in 1968 by D. Arnold. Neferu II was called King's Wife and HMT and SWT MRYT F King's Wife, his beloved. She might have been Menchu Hotep II's sister since she also bore the titles of S3T and SWTSMS WTNKHT F, eldest king daughter of his body, IRJTP3T, hereditary princess, and HMWTNBWT, mistress of all women. She was buried in the tomb TT319 of Deir el Bara. Kawit was one of Menchu Hotep II's secondary wives. She bore the titles of HMT and SWT MRYT F, King's Wife, His Beloved, and KHKRT and SWT, King's Embellishment. She was a priestess of the goddess Hathor. It has been suggested that she was Nubian. She was buried under the terrace of Menchu Hotep II's mortuary temple where Naval uncovered her sarcophagus in 1907. Sade, Ashayet, Henhenet and Kemsat all four were Menchu Hotep II's secondary wives. They bore the title of HMT and SWT MRYT F, King's Wife his beloved, and KHKRT and SWTW3 tit, unique embellishment of the king. They were priestess of Hathor and each of them was buried in a single pit dug under the terrace of Menchu Hotep II's temple. Note that an alternative theory holds that Henhenet was one of Intif III's secondary wives, possibly the mother of Neferu II. Henhenet might have died in childbirth. MWYT, a five-year-old girl buried with Menchu Hotep II's secondary wives. It is not clear if she was one of Menchu Hotep's wives herself or one of his daughters. Reign. Menchu Hotep II is considered to be the first ruler of the Middle Kingdom of Egypt. The Turin Canon credits him with a reign of 51 years. Many Egyptologists have long considered two rock reliefs, showing Menchu Hotep II towering over smaller figures labelled King Intif, to be conclusive evidence that his predecessor Intif III was his own father. This is, however, not entirely certain, as these reliefs may have had other propagandistic purposes, and there are other difficulties surrounding Menchu Hotep's true origin his three name changes, and his frequent attempts to claim descent from various gods. Early reign when he ascended the Theban throne, 
Menchu Hotep II inherited the vast land conquered by his predecessors from the first cataract in the south to Abydos and Chebu in the north. Menchu Hotep II's first 14 years of reign seem to have been peaceful in the Theban region as there are no surviving traces of conflict firmly datable to that period. In fact the general scarcity of testimonies from the early part of Menchu Hotep's reign might indicate that he was young when he ascended the throne, an hypothesis consistent with his 51 years long reign. Reunification of Egypt in the 14th year of his reign, an uprising occurred in the north. This uprising is most probably connected with the ongoing conflict between Menchu Hotep II based in Thebes and the rival 10th dynasty based at Heracleopolis who threatened to invade Upper Egypt. The 14th year of Menchu Hotep's reign is indeed named Year of the Crime Athenis. This certainly refers to the conquest of the Thinite region by the Heracleopolitan kings who apparently desecrated the sacred ancient royal necropolis of Abydos in the process. Menchu Hotep II subsequently dispatched his armies to the north. The famous tomb of the warriors of Deir el Bahari, discovered in the 1920s, contained the linen wrapped unmummified bodies of 60 soldiers all killed in battle, their shroud bearing Menchu Hotep II's Kartucha, due to its proximity to the Theban royal tombs. The tomb of the warriors is believed to be that of heroes who died during the conflict between Menchu Hotep II and his foes to the north. Merikara, the ruler of Lower Egypt at the time may have died during the conflict which further weakened his kingdom and gave Menchu Hotep the opportunity to reunite Egypt. The exact date when reunification was achieved is not known, but it is assumed to have happened shortly before year 39 of his reign. Indeed, evidence shows that the process took time, maybe due to the general insecurity of the country at the time. Commoners were buried with weapons. The funerary stele of officials show them holding weapons instead of the usual regalia and when Menchu Hotep II's successor sent an expedition to Punt, some 20 years after the reunification, they still had to clear the Wadi Hemamut of rebels. Following the reunification, Menchu Hotep II was considered by his subjects to be divine, or half-divine. This was still the case by the end of 12th dynasty some 200 years later. Senesret III and Amenemhat III directed stellar commemorating opening of the mouth ceremonies practiced on Menchu Hotep II's statues. Military activities outside of Egypt Menchu Hotep II launched military campaigns under the command of his vizier Kati south into Nubia in his 29th and 31st years of reign, which had gained its independence during the first intermediate period. This is the first attested appearance of the term Kush for Nubia in Egyptian records. In particular, Manchu Hotep posted a garrison on the island fortress of Elephantine so troops could rapidly be deployed southwards. There is also evidence of military actions against Canaan. The king reorganized the country and placed a vizier at the head of the administration. The viziers of his reign were Bebi and Daji. His treasurer was Katai who was involved in organizing the said festival for the king. Other important officials were the treasurer Maketa and the overseer of Silas Meru. His general was Intif. Reorganization of the government throughout the first intermediary period and until Menchu Hotep II's reign, the nomarchs held important powers over Egypt. Their office had become hereditary during the Sixth Dynasty of Egypt and the collapse of central power assured them complete freedom over their lands. After the unification of Egypt however, Menchu Hotep II initiated a strong policy of centralization reinforcing his royal authority by creating the posts of governor of Upper Egypt and governor of Lower Egypt who had power over the local nomarchs. Menchu Hotep also relied on a mobile force of royal court officials who further controlled the deeds of the nomarchs. 
Finally, the nomarchs who supported the 10th dynasty, such as the governor of Asayat, certainly lost their power to the profit of the king. In the meantime, Manchu Hotep II started an extensive program of self-deification emphasizing the divine nature of the ruler. Titulary Manchu Hotep II's self-deification program is evident from temples he built where he is represented bearing the headgear of Minanaman. But perhaps the best evidence for this policy is his three titularies. His second Horus and Nebti names were the Divine One of the White Crown while he is also referred as the Son of Hathor at the end of his reign. Menchu Hotep II changed his titulary twice during his reign, the first time in his 14th regnal year, marking the initial successes of his campaign against Heracleopolis Magna to the north. The second time on or shortly before his 39th year of reign, marking the final success of that campaign, and his reunification of all of Egypt. More precisely, this second change may have taken place on the occasion of the said festival celebrated during his 39th year on the throne. In general, the titularies of Menchu Hotep II show a desire to return to the traditions of the Old Kingdom. In particular he adopted the complete five-fold titulary after his reunification of Egypt, seemingly for the first time since the Sixth Dynasty. Though known records are sparse for much of the first intermediary period that preceded him, another proof that Menchu Hotep II paid great attention to the traditions of the Old Kingdom is his second nomen, sometimes found as S3HW, TRNBIWN, TMNTWHTP, the son of Hathor, the Lady of Dendera. Menchu Hotep, this reference to Hathor rather than Re is similar to the titulary of Pepi I. Finally, in later king lists, Menchu Hotep was referred to with a variant of his third titulary monuments. Menchu Hotep II commanded the construction of many temples, though few survive. To this day, well preserved is a funerary chapel found in 2014 at Abydos. In doing so, Menchu Hotep followed a tradition started by his grandfather Intef II. Royal building activities in the provincial temples of Upper Egypt began under Intef II and lasted throughout the Middle Kingdom.